FeatureCam 2015, the YREDM cutting database has been extended with an ability to store a greater variety of different parameters. Two new parameters have been added to the cutting conditions, namely a nozzle position and a setting for the fluid type. This is supplemented by the addition of 16 numeric and 5 string variables that are fully customizable and have customizable entry fields in the cutting data. This provides a more comprehensive range of parameters, increasing the flexibility and applicability of FeatureCam's wire EDM. In the case of this, we've just got a sample component. This is just a small ratchet shape component. And if I do a quick 3D simulation, you'll see we've got some zigzag pocketing and just cutting the outside profile, like so. So there's our part, and what we want to do is we want to set some associated cutting conditions. Now if we go to the browser page, you'll see there's a folder here. If I open that folder, you'll see there are two post processes. There's a safe one, which is the default, and we've got this one, which is the one we're going to be editing. I've already loaded this in, but you can do this just by dragging and dropping into the FeatureCam interface. Let's go back to the part view and look at the features. So you can see we've got the features there. What we're interested in is setting the cutting data. Let's go over to the stock, double click on the stock, and then you'll notice under the condition area you can see what we're cutting from. So we're cutting from steel, we've got a generic 0.25mm uh, wire, and we're using the Sodic MK25 model. What you can see underneath is we have two additional options. We've got nozzle and fluid. In this case I'm going to go to the conditions, open this up and you'll see that we have several different, uh, or several extra positions or settings for our conditions. In this case I've got nozzle position but by default we have none of these settings pre-filled in. So what we want to do is we want to add extra uh, elements for these different cutting conditions. So to create a nozzle position we just simply select new nozzle position type we get a entry box where we can enter the name. In this case, because I'm using the Sodic, I'm going to go ahead and create an open nozzle type. I'm going to create another new one, and this one I'm going to call it a closed. This is closed U. And I'll create an additional one, and we'll call this one closed L. So that's now given me three different nozzle types, and also my default which is blank. I can then choose the fluid type, so this allows me to choose what kind of dielectric fluid I'm going to be uh, machining in. Again, create a new fluid type. In this case, I'll just keep this simple. I'm going to say, I'll just have water. And I can choose another one. In this case, we'll say oil. I've now got two different choices for my dielectric fluid. I'm going to go ahead and select the water. And then go ahead and choose the cutting data. By selecting the cutting data, this opens up the form. And here you can see I've got the cutting data table, which has actually got my nozzle position and fluid already in the list. In each case, obviously, I need to build a cutting data table for my different positions and different fluid types. At the moment, it doesn't matter what I go to for my number of passes, I'm still left with no cutting data. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and copy this. So I'm going to say create some new cutting data. And I can go and copy the values from somewhere else. So I can choose the copy values function. And I can scroll down to what I'm interested in. So in this case, we're cutting from steel. So we go down to the steel materials. We then go down to the MK25s, which we'll see here. And I can select my 25 with a 5mm cut depth. Say OK, and I get the data copied from there. As we scroll through our different parameters, you can see here that as we get to the comp value, we've then got a series of uh, extra ones called numeric all the way through from 1 to 16. And then we see the five string variables as well. At the moment, it's a bit difficult to fill information in here because I don't really know what the numeric and string variables mean. So what we need to do is we need to go and change the post processor to fill in the values that might be of interest to us. So I'm just going to go ahead and just say OK to that for the time being. Say OK to my cutting data. Note you can see our nozzle and fluid are already indicated on our stock properties. So I'm going to go to my post processor. I'm going to edit this post processor. 
and then I'm going to go to my CNC information and you'll see we've got cutting condition names. Select that and you can see we've got the default for feed, water, comp num and comp value. And then I've got all of my additional ones, numeric, all the way down to 16, and then the string variables as well. In this case I'm just going to populate some of the numeric ones. I'm going to give these the names that would be typical uh, if we were outputting our uh, cutting data to the Sodic machine. So in this case I'm just going to set a few of these parameters. So I'm going to call numeric one number on to indicate when my spark comes on and off for when the spark goes off. I'm also going to set some other parameters so let's go ahead and set the, the current. So in this case I'm going to set that for the current parameter to be IP and I'm going to add some more as well. So we want HRP which in this case if we're cutting with water um, this is only relevant to oil. And we can switch to MAO as well. So we've now got our uh, settings for our uh, adaptive control sensitivity. I can continue this all the way through for all the different parameters. So again, choose the next one for our servo voltage. Next one in this case. Keep cycling through each one and so on and so on. Once we've got all our parameters in there, in this case of course I could fill in more. I'm just going to say OK to this. I'm just going to say save the post. And then just close that off. And say OK. So I've now made changes to the post. If I go back to my cutting conditions, and again go to the cutting data, and then scroll through, you'll now see that I have my cutting parameters that I can set based on those, those numerical names that I've changed. So I can now fill in these values that I want. So for example, I'm going to set my spark on to be 0.12 and my off to be 0.14. I'm going to set my uh, voltage, uh, sorry, my current setting. In this case, I'm going to turn on the roughing circuit and I'm going to set the uh, AC cutting and I'm going to set my main gate ampage to be 15. So I can go through and I can change all of these values. So HRP, we're going to set to zero because we're cutting with water, not oil. And then I'm going to go to my uh, setting for the uh, adaptive control sensitivity. I'm going to set this to be 240 servo voltage in this case, set to 0, 040, 0, and so on. So we can continuously update our parameters to be the settings that we want to cut the desired component. We can then save those and export those and use those at a later stage. I'm going to rerun through my simulation. But now we're using the new cutting parameters that I've set in both my post and my part.